E3 2018 is a mere three months away, and thanks to Tom Warren, we got confirmation about when Microsoft's and Xbox's E3 2018 briefing will take place, as well as the fact that it's going to be different somehow, and we're going to discuss all that stuff right now. What is going on, guys? Ryan Dalthor 19 the man with the million, back again with another video. And before we get started, make sure you check out my uh, Splinter Cell Amazon leak video. God, I can't wait f for that game to come back, and I hope it is true. Crossing my fingers, please Ubisoft, bring back Splinter Cell. Anyways, on to the video at hand. Thanks to Tom Warren, we have confirmation that Microsoft's E3 2018 briefing will be held on Sunday, June 10th at 1 p.m. Pacific Time or 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, Microsoft is the second company to announce their their press briefing. Uh, Bethesda was the first, and they're doing it Sunday night, like they have been the last couple years. Although this information hasn't been officially confirmed by Microsoft themselves. I haven't seen Phil or Mike or the official Xbox Twitter handles or even a posting on Newswire about it yet. But Tom Warren is uh, you know, connected and he would know the information. So I'm I'm going with the uh, with the thought process. This is all true, and Microsoft will probably announce it pretty soon. Of course, you guys may remember Microsoft had their press conference last year on Sunday when normally they would go on Mondays. It'd be Microsoft's kind of in the morning, and then Nintendo's at some point with the direct, and then Sony's later on at the evening. Ubisoft and EA's all scattered throughout. However, last year Microsoft did something different. They moved their press conference from Monday to Sunday, and they revealed the Xbox One X, presumably because they wanted to at least get a lot of uh, positive news coverage uh, to themselves, uh, so they can at least have Xbox News roll for 24 hours instead of being you know taken away uh, by Nintendo or whatever Sony announces that night. So we're back at, you know, the same thing here. So it's on Sunday. Uh, it'll be, you know, I think an hour earlier than the previous one. So it's going to be right around 3 p.m. for me. Uh, I think that's a pretty good time. Uh, I'd rather watch it during the afternoon uh, rather than like super early on Monday. And I'm really interested in seeing what Microsoft obviously is going to show this year. A lot of Xbox fans are pinning their hopes and dreams on finding out what exactly the future of Xbox holds, what games will be playing, you know, after E3, what games will be playing in 2019, and presumably what games we might be enjoying in 2020. So this is an E3 to definitely look forward to, and hell, I look forward to all the E3s. I watch every single press conference from all the uh, publishers. It's like, it's like Christmas for gamers. I really enjoy it. But the interesting thing here isn't necessarily so much the date. We kind of figured they'd do it on Sunday again. Is that Tom Warren is saying that he, that Microsoft is doing something different for E3 this year. And he says, I think that different, and he uses different in quotations, element, will start to make sense soon. And this isn't the first time we've heard this. You know, Phil Spencer said they're doing something different but positive this year. Greenberg has said something similar. So a lot of the higher-ups at Xbox have said that this year will be different somehow. And, you know, thinking about what they could be or what different entails, you know, I have a couple different, like, thoughts on that and, and scenarios. Like, one would be, would they would they change how the press conference is uh, run? Like, if they went to a Nintendo Direct style... That would be considered obviously different, but I don't think they they do that. I think Phil has been on the record uh, that he likes having the live audience there, so he can hear the crowd roar, especially for the backwards compatibility stuff. You'd assume people go crazy for a Halo Six reveal this year, maybe even a Fable Four reveal. So I think he he loves the live crowd feedback. So I'm not sure that a Nintendo Direct kind of style presentation is what you know, different would be. So I kind of scratched that one out. The only couple ones that come to mind is it has to either do something with Mixer, which Microsoft is heavily, you know, investing in promoting and hiring for. Uh, they're trying to get that service off the ground. If you don't know what Mixer is, it's a streaming service just like Twitch. It has super low latency where it's like, 
Uh, you can interact with your chat right away as it happens. Uh, they introduced a couple new features recently, like Share Controller. It's a, it's a pretty good uh, quality streaming service. And the other thing I was thinking different, maybe it has to do something with Game Pass. So these are my two like kind of thought processes going into what different means. And of course, I either could be right or I could 100% be wrong. I'm just kind of you know throwing darts at a at a dartboard and maybe something sticks, maybe not. But bear with me. So. For Game Pass, we all kind of know Microsoft's like hanging kind of the future of Xbox on Game Pass and how well it performs. You know, it started out last year with just kind of old games, $10 a month, you get 100 games. And they added, uh, you know, starting in like five days, Sea of Thieves. You know, they announced in January all Microsoft's first party games going forward will go day and date into Game Pass. So clearly, Game Pass is a huge thing for Microsoft. And it's, you know it's going to be front and center as well uh, during the press conference and during E3 week. Uh, maybe they make a deal with a third party, uh, but that's n really neither here and there. What would make it different is, imagine a scenario that you're a Game Pass subscriber and any demos that are shown off uh, at E3 or maybe on the press conference would become available to you to download and play uh, for a certain amount of time during you know the three days that E3 is on. It would give gamers a chance to experience E3 without actually having to be there. Now that would be pretty cool checking out all the new games like Forza Horizon 4 or you know Halo 6 or a new Splinter Cell or any of those other stuff that would be cool you know basically getting the E3 experience without having to spend thousands of dollars going there and waiting in line to get that that thing the, the problem with that is though I've been to E3 I've played some of those demos they're not exactly 100% quality builds some of them have frame rate problems some of them don't look the greatest and I'm not sure all the third parties would exactly be on board for something like that. It would be an interesting idea uh, to get gamers to, to try out some of that stuff. And it would it would probably be a really great PR move. But I'm not sure a lot of uh, the publishers would be like happy with that idea. So it might have something to do with Game Pass. Maybe it has to do with the, the downloading stuff. Or maybe it's something completely different that I'm not even thinking about regarding Game Pass. But that's kind of the first thought that comes to mind. The other thing is Mixer. Uh, the streaming service that Microsoft runs, uh, that they're hopeful takes off and you know grows just as much as Twitch has. Now the thing is, I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but Microsoft isn't really on the exhibitor list this year at E3. Uh, they're exhibiting as Mixer, and it's true you can look up the information. Uh, the booth is definitely bigger than the one that leaked out earlier this year that Aaron Greenberg said was false. They actually have a bigger booth, but it's just Mixer, not Microsoft. Make of that whatever you will. I'm not really sure. Now, what could be different regarding that is Microsoft just a enabled a feature of Mixer where a, oh, someone watching a stream... Uh, could take over the game for somebody. So if my favorite streamer is playing PUBG and I plug in my controller uh, to my PC or I take control via uh, a virtual keyboard, I can actually play that game via Mixer. I think that's what they're going to use for their eventual streaming service that Phil's talked about. But imagine a scenario like this. Since Mixer has a space there and they're probably going to invite all the, the big Mixer streamers to E3, Syph, uh, Magnetron, Arconaut, all those dudes, they'll be there uh, probably demoing games and playing online. Uh, what if they had like things set up where uh, you know a Mixer user could demo a game or take over for one of those stream streamers and play it? Kind of similar to what I mentioned with Game Pass, but just kind of more... Um, localized or maybe n not as like s widespread you could you could watch all your favorite streamers play the games through mixer because they have that uh setup you know but you wouldn't necessarily be able to do play it yourself it it's something to think about i mean the share controller thing is a pretty interesting feature it's definitely going to be used uh as a long-term feature for the future of xbox so when when i hear tom warren saying things are going to be different and it'll start to make sense soon you know, those are the couple things that popped in my head. Xbox Game Pass 
and Mixer. It'll be interesting to see what this different is and if it really truly is any different. What if it's just the same thing and it's just PR being PR and saying it's different this year in reality. Maybe it's not. But personally, I'd be for the Game Pass idea. Like, hey, that uh, that demo for Ori 2 looked pretty cool. Let me download it and play it for 10 minutes and see what it is. I think that'd be cool. Maybe that's the evolution that Microsoft is, is wants to do for E3. Either way, we'll find out probably pretty soon because Microsoft hasn't announced their plans yet. And, I, and when they do, we'll probably get a drop. I'll make a video about it. And you guys can tell me what you think. So what do you guys think? Am I right on the money with this different stuff? Are you excited for uh, Microsoft press conference on Sunday this year? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Hit the notification bell so you're always notified when I do drop said content. Share this out on social media. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later.